Adobe just announced Firefly. This is their entry into AI image generation. And before I show you the crazy things that they are doing with AI, let's talk about why this is so important. Now you might think, well, it's just another company offering AI image generation. Who cares? We have enough tools and we can also use these open source models on our computers. But AI and Adobe coming together and Adobe offering a product for image generation. First of all, this is going to shut up all the artists saying, well, AI, you are freaks for using AIs. This is not art, blah, blah, blah. All that discussion. Now we have a major company behind that that is providing the artistic tools to millions of artists, designers, creators out there. Every kind of movie, ad agency, gaming production, any kind of creative process has Adobe somewhere in the pipeline. So this offers a lot of credibility to AI image generation. The other thing is that, of course, like I said, Adobe is used in all these companies out there. And this is important because if you want to use a tool, it has to fit into your pipeline because there is not just a lot of employees in your company, but also overreaching to other companies. And if it is integrated into the Adobe products and it fits into the process that the Adobe products work, that of course makes AI image generation a lot more accessible to millions of people with the click of a button because they already have the software. And as you know, convenience is a very important thing for new technology to get adopted by a greater user field. Now, the third reason here is that Adobe says the models are only traded on images that are either public domain or they have the license to because they are from Adobe stock or they have an open license. So all of that is commercially legal to use. Again, this is very important. If you have a business, if you use AI images in a commercial surrounding business to business, business to customer, you are a lot more liable. You're a lot more suable than the normal private person. So this gives a lot of safety for all these companies out there. And of course, you have to keep in mind that a lot of these companies create really big products. That is a big risk to take and nobody wants to have that risk on their shoulders. So let's see what this can actually do. Now here, of course, normal text to image generation. But on the right side here, you can already see that this is simplified for the interface, but at the same time, offers a lot of choices. So we have here different content types, for example, art, graphic or photo. We have different styles that can be applied. You can see here he's clicking on ink sketch and this is turning into ink sketches. Down here where my head is, you have a color and tone, you have the lighting, you have the composition. So there is more control applied, there is more choices and they are built in a way that are useful for for professionals in the creative fields. Here you can see that we have an image and we have on the right side the aspect ratio, but the image doesn't fit the aspect ratio. So this is then created as an out painting. Below that, down here, you can see there is four different suggestions of what the background can be. You can choose one and then this is applied to the image here. But again, this is created in a format that is useful for you as a creator because these are ratios that are mostly used for your images, like of course square for Instagram. And then we have this portrait format that can also be used very well in social media and normal screen resolutions. Next, we have here a tool and that can mask out for example, the shirt. And as you know, Adobe has the ability to have this kind of smart masking that understands the subject that is happening in the image so that you don't have to go in there and do a fine detailed masking with your mouse. So now this has created a jacket again. We can see down here we have three different versions. We can click on that and that is then applied to the image. This is something we already have in Photoshop and adjust the different parts of the face. You can see on the right side, we have, for example, age, 
yaw, eye direction, hair waviness, bang lengths, eye wrinkliness, eye openness and more options like that. Again, this is already applied in a way that is useful for your creative workflow for the pipeline in which you're working as a professional. So that is really good. Here we see a depth map from a photo created on a room. Of course, we can do that with open post depth map. And then again, from a text prompt, there are multiple choices created here of different furnishing styles. Now I have to say, this might be a cherry picked result, I don't know, but the result is very good from how everything works together, how the materials are applied. That is actually surprisingly nice results. Again, it might be cherry picked. For example, down here, you see that one of the rooms that's more like a pop art has this kind of Google map image already framed on the wall. That looks like a very happy accident here. Then on the lower right part, we have this minimalist black and white furnishing and we have fitting to that a minimalist painting on the wall that fits suspiciously well but of course could be possible who knows next we have here 3d models that can be imported of course they can also be moved around now again this is a simplification of the process because because as you know with control net with stable diffusion we have to go into software like blender to prepare these images and then we can apply a prompt to it but there is so far no solution where you can import a 3d model directly for example into automatic 1111 to use it as a base for your render so here this is made possible and as you can see we have results where the perspective is fitting and we have different castles in a photorealistic style. And now we have the castles but it is cakes still in the same perspective. The material looks pretty good, the background not so much but that's probably going to improve over time. Now this next case is really interesting. It says make a birthday poster and you can see that this is creating designs. Now in the next step, it's for a six year old. So the designs are changing accordingly, but then an image is dragged into the designs. And the interesting thing you see here is that the image can fit into the design and the text is applied on top of the image. That suggests that the AI can do multi-layer outputs that even has a font file as an output so you can change the text and it has areas where you can put the image and the design elements as well as adjustment layers can be put on top of the image. So when you look for example here on the right side you can see that the image is a lot darker, the text is put on top and also the design with the cake here is put on top of the image. But when we look over here to this image you can see that the coloring of the image has more like a vintage look with a reddish orange tint in that and the image is overlaid with these design elements in the corners. So this is an AI that creates templates for you from a text. That's pretty impressive. Next, we are looking at another content aware editing process. So here we have an image of a dog. Now the prompt is applied to the image and it is really interesting to see here on the right side that you are in a chat with the AI. So you have a conversation to improve the image over time by telling the AI what you want. So in the next step, this is changing the background of the image. It is putting it into a gingerbread house. And again, you can see the conversation on the right side. This probably also suggests that you can use the AI on the go while you are on your smartphone, on your tablet, and you're talking with your customer. What kind of changes do you need? The AI is applying that and then the image is ready to go while you are at the customer. The next thing here is something that a lot of people in my community are wishing for and this is vector from AI. So here, this is the prompt and the image is generating three outputs. All of them are vector images. Again, on the right side, you have different choices. In this case, we have vector styles. Again, we have the ink sketch and other styles. Then we also have color tone. We have lighting. We have composition in there. And you can also do adjustments on top of that. So in this case, this is downloaded directly into InDesign. And you can see on the right side here on top, 
we have the groups of the different elements. So they are already grouped for you. Again, smart because workflow, because pipeline. So here, because it's vector, you can, of course, move it around. You can resize it, no problem. In this case, we are seeing a process is combining multiple images together. So you're simply dropping in several images. Now, when you look closely on the left side, the first one is a photo of a penguin. The second one is a photo of a beach, but the third one is a watercolor drawing of a forest lake. And in the combination of the AI, we have the image content, but we also have a style transfer for the final image. So the combination is also happening in a smart way. Here's another example of this happening. Now, of course, you can also see that the AI is taking its freedom with what is happening with the images. But in all of these images, we have kind of a church built in there we have it stylistically and from the colors represented although the choices are kind of wild but of course you can re-roll if you want to have more choice the next example we are seeing here is color conditioned generation so there is a starting image and it's put in as a color reference then the text prompt is given for the image you want to have. And now the colors from the input image are applied to the output. So it's not the style. It is not the image content. It's just picking up the colors and then creating you a landscape, in this case, a beach with clouds that are using the same colors. Here we have the same thing. We have a reference photo that has nothing to do with these temples. And then it is applied to this kind of vintage photos of Cambodian temples. Pretty cool. Here we have classic upscaling. So far, not that special, although the result looks surprisingly good. And one example we haven't seen yet that they showed in their live stream is the generation of text. So here you can enter the text, you can decide on the font and the text effect. And after that, you can then apply different AI suggestions based on your prompt, but also based on the sample effects that you can choose. This again is part of of the everyday workflow of a designer and is really, really useful. And I find that the results are actually surprisingly good. This is absolutely mind blowing. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.